right, so today we are going to be continuing on with more equivalent fractions. So starting off, when we add fractions, the denominators must be the same. They have to be the same. But how do we change the denominator without changing the value of the fraction? In order to add the fractions, 2 fifths and 3 tenths, we need to change 2 fifths to have a denominator of 10. So we need to change this fraction so it has a denominator of 10. Or in other words, we need to create an equivalent fraction. We remember back from Tuesday, an equivalent fraction is a fraction that has the same value. So how are we going to change the 2 fifths so it has a denominator of 10? Well, there's this one way for us to think about this. So we need to get an equivalent fraction for 2 fifths that has the denominator of 10. So we are kind of wondering what number did we multiply by 5? to get 10 in our denominator. If I look at my place value chart and I find the fives, there is the five, how many times would I have to multiply five to get 10? One, two times. I would have to multiply five two times to get 10. So that's telling us we're multiplying the five by two. And when we multiply the denominator by 2, we would get 10, because 5 times 2 is 10. And now we have 10 in our denominator, which is exactly what we needed to do to get an equivalent fraction. But we, what we do, or what we multiply the denominator by, we also have to multiply the numerator by. So if we multiply the denominator by 2, we also have to multiply the numerator by 2. So when we multiply the denominator 5 times 2, we got 10. Now let's multiply our numerators, so our two top numbers right here. So if we multiply 2 times 2, we can look at our place value chart. There's our 2. 1, 2. We would get 4. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So the equivalent fraction for 2 fifths is 4 tenths. And how did we get 4 tenths? Well, we looked and we determined that 2 is the number we would multiply by 5 to get to 10. So we needed to figure out how many times we would multiply by 5 to get to 10. And by looking at our place value chart, it was 2. So we would get 4 tenths. Erase that really quick. Moving on to our next problem here. 1 third is equal to something over 15. We do not know what is going to be in our numerator, but we need to figure that out. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, we need to find a number to multiply by to get 15. So looking at our place value chart, we'll start with our denominators. What number, or what three times what number is 15? Because that will tell us what number we have to multiply the fraction by. So three times what number is equal to 15? Let's find our three in our multiplication chart. So how many times does it take to get to 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 3 times 5 is equal to 15. So 3 times 5 is equal to 15. we got to remember what we do to our denominator. We also have to multiply to our numerator. So if we multiply 3 times 5, to get 15, we're going to multiply 1 
times five to get five. So for this equation, we multiplied or we found that five times three is what equals 15. And knowing that we had to multiply the three by five to get 15, we also have to multiply the numerator by five. And one times five is five fifteenths. So we could just write our five up there. So one third is equal to five fifteenths. They are equivalent fractions. And then we'll erase this really quick. Moving on. A couple of practice problems now. So we need to determine what would go in our numerator for blank over 12. So 3 fourths is equal to what over 12? Well, how we're going to solve this? We need to figure out what number we're going to multiply by four to get 12. So what number will we multiply by four to get 12? If we find our four in our multiplication chart, four times what number is equal to 12? Four times three is equal to 12. So we got four times three equals 12. What we do to the denominator, we also have to do to the numerator. So what is going to go in this box? Three will go in that box because we multiply the denominator by three to get to 12. So we also have to multiply the numerator by three. Three times three, there's our time symbol. Three times three equals one, two, three, nine. Three times three is equal to nine. Knowing that, we know that 3 fourths is equivalent to 9 twelfths. And we multiplied 3 fourths by 3. And a little bit of a pop quiz. 3 over 3 is also equal to what? 3 over 3 is also equal to 1. Anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's equal to one. So two over two is equal to one, three over three is equal to one, and so on. All right, one more practice problem here. We need to find an equivalent fraction that has 32 as a denominator that is equal to 5 eighths. So 5 eighths is equal to blank over 32. So to get that, we need to find out what number they multiplied by 8 to get 32. So 8 times what number equals 32? All right, look up on your multiplication chart, find your 8. How many times is 8 going to 32? Eight goes into 32 four times. Since we multiplied the denominator by four to get to 32, we're also going to multiply the numerator by four. Now five times four equals Twenty. Five times four is equal to twenty. We multiplied it by four because we have to multiply the numerator by the same as the denominator. So five eighths is equivalent to twenty over thirty two. All right, so this will be your guys' homework for today. You can look at your multiplication chart when, because it's posted on each and every one of your slides. I'm going to encourage everybody to use this. And we'll just, I'll get you started on this one one more time. So 2 thirds is equal to blank over 12. What number 
did they multiply or what number do we have to multiply by three to get to 12? One, two, three, four. Three times four is equal to 12. So that's as far as I'm going to get you guys started with these. Um, this will be posted on Schoology for you guys to complete. And once you complete the assignment, submit it on Schoology and we will get it graded and put into Infinite Campus for you. And also, like I always say, if you guys have any troubles with this stuff for math, please send Ms. Fosberg or Mr. Jans an email and we will set up a Google Meet to help you guys.